This is how to restring a tambura. Uh, tools that you need. You need a pair of wire cutters. You need some kind of needle nose pliers. You need a file. Sandpaper will also work. Coarse sandpaper, but I use a file uh, for um, filing the pegs and just roughing them up enough so that they work smoothly as friction pegs. And also street chalk, not cart uh, chalkboard chalk, which has oil in it, but street chalk, which doesn't have oil in it, and is used to put on the pegs to make them function better. So, with those four things, you can easily restring a tambora. We're just going to do one string, uh, but before we start, just if you could focus up here on the neck, um, notice that as the strings come up through the nut hole, they're going over the pegs. So, when you turn the peg, it'll tighten it. So this goes over it here. In this case, this is a one, two, three, four, five string tambura. Uh, the second peg is the upper one. Sometimes this is number one string. Sometimes this is number two string instead of this one. It really depends on the spacing. The first one goes around to the left as you're coming up. The next one goes around to the right. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. The string comes up here and it is not touching the lower peg. So that works in this case. Sometimes it's the reverse. They make them so that this one is slightly over this way and this one's slightly over this way. And then you have to use this as your second peg, go to the left of that around, and this one would go around here this way. So it really depends. You have to suck, suss it and see. It depends on your tambora. It varies. Sometimes it's one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes it's one, two, three, four, five, or if it's four string, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, usually, uh, I just do one string at a time and leave the other older strings on. That way, the bridge doesn't come off. You don't have to re-glue it, and uh, you know you don't have to mess around with anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this paw string, ready to tune, and uh, we're just going to loosen it. And then I'm going to cut it. This is an instrumental tambora, but an instrumental tambora, female tambora, male tamboras, the, the concept is exactly the same in all the instruments. Um, notice down here, I took off the bead, put it aside, don't lose the bead. You're going to put it back on when you put the string on. And then push the string toward the bottom so you can get enough to pull it and pull up. And that will undo this crimped wire that holds the string in place. And then you can either pull it through or cut it or remove it in some manner. So it's removed from the bottom. And then take the peg out. And with your needle nose pliers, remove the remaining string. You can just grab the little tail that's usually on there. Pull it through. And then just remove that, hopefully not making all that noise. So that gives you a peg. You can see here on the peg, there's a bit of wear here, so it's worn smooth. And if that is too smooth and you put it back in, it'll start slipping. So that's the part you want to rough up. Um, depending on how much you have to rough it up, you may have to do a little bit on the tip as well. But for now, you take this file. We're not going this way, which would take off a lot of wood. We're going this way, basically in the direction of the file, right where the wood was touching the peg. And you lightly rough it up. You're not really trying to take wood off as much as you're just trying to rough up that smooth area. And you want to keep it round and stuff. Sometimes if it's been in a closet for 25 years, you may have a little swelled area on the outside, in which case you can turn it kind of sideways and be a little bit more aggressive about taking wood off. But if you do that, you also have to redo the tip as well. In this case, this has been well kept and there's not a whole lot to do except just rough up that area. I'm also going to just take off the excess chalk. You don't really need it. And you just do that by rubbing. Notice um, there's a one on here, which means the first peg. A lot of times there's a little slice. Ah, this says one, two, three. Isn't that interesting? It's the first peg, but it has three on it. Uh, 
don't know what to say about that. Either they put the pegs in wrong in the first place or they didn't count the way we're counting. But whatever, there's three slices. Usually there should be one on this slot. I'm assuming everything's okay though. It seemed to work fine. Um, then, you estimate where to put the chalk. You can put it back in and just get it very really exact. And uh, I'm using pink just because that's what we have at the moment. As long as it's street chalk. And you just put chalk on the area where the wood is going to be touching the peg. Here and here. I didn't really do anything to the tip because I didn't think it needed it. But you might want to rough up and take a little bit off the tip too if it's binding at the tip. You'll know when you put your peg in if it's working right. If, it, if you're having a problem with it binding here, you, you'll have to take the peg out again and take off a little bit. Okay, so the peg is ready. That's all you have to do. And then you want to get your string. In this case, this is a instrumental tambour, so the postern uses a number five steel. Um, so it's always a good idea to check your gauges if you're not sure. Just you can use a micrometer. But just make sure you know the right string gauges you're putting on there. Now, I like to just turn it upside down here. You see all these holes here? This is the hole you just put your wire in here. And we're going to do that crimp. So we're going to take it and crimp about oh, half an inch. Just push it down. See that? You get that crimp. Can you see that? Yeah. Excellent. And then we're going to take the rest of the string and put it inside the crimp and push it down. Use your fingernails and you push the crimp into the, whoop, into the hole. Like that. So now it's in the hole. And then when you pull it taut, that will keep it from pulling out. So then come up here. You want to get about a hand's worth from the hole at this point. So you measure your hand from the pinky right above the hole to the tip of your thumb. And everything else is excess wire. You just cut it there. So that's about the correct But You don't want too much wire at the end. It just makes everything too much. At this point, you still haven't put it in the nut. And you want to remember, do not forget, golden rule, do not forget to put the tuning, the fine tuning bead on at this point. Otherwise, you'll have to take everything off and go, ah, I forgot. Put it back there. Put this in the slot. Put this through the hole. Like that, and then get in there. And then take your peg. So you, what you want to do with everything except everything up to mm, 16 bronze, you put it through and then put it through again. Wrap it around and put it through again. And the tail will come out the other side. Can you see that? Uh, I put it through okay and I'm putting it through again all right and then you bend it down can you see that yeah great and then you push on it and pull it tight okay and then you slip it in find the hole on the other side And um, check, make sure you're all good there. And you want to pull it tight. You don't want to have any loose stuff happening there. And then you wrap it. Let me, so you can just see, you wrap it around so it's going over and it's pulling down on the tail. And wrap it as evenly as you can just so it looks good. 
doesn't bunch up at the bottom. You don't want it really bunched up at the bottom where it's going to be touching the wood, but you want it pretty low on the peg. So that's why you don't want too much wire. That's about right. Perfect. The string gets tight. Yeah, and then and you want, uh, that would be, get your note. At this point, I would tune the note. And there you have it. And that's one string. You can pull up the B. And do that for all the rest of the strings as you go along. Basically the same thing. Don't take all the pegs out. These pegs should be in the correct order, so you don't want to change the order of the pegs. Make sure that if you do it one at a time, you keep the order as is. This is the first peg. Even though it was Mark three, we'll find out. Uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. For strings uh, heavier than 0.016 phosphor bronze, like the female tambura low saw, 0.022 phosphor bronze, or for male tamburas, the posturing, which is also 0.022 phosphor bronze, the low saw, 0.028 phosphor bronze. You don't have to put the string through the hole and then wrap it around and through again. All you have to do, can you see that? Is put it through once and then just bend it down and then wrap the string around that. And that'll hold it in place. A lot of times the hole's not big enough to get it through twice anyway. So that's fine for that. Perfect. All right.